What is going on Pokemon community? It is Achilles018 here and today we are talking about the top 5 rivals from the main series Pokemon games. From Pokemon Red and Blue to Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Let's Go Eevee, we have seen 17 rival trainers emerge to challenge our skills in raising, battling, and befriending our Pokemon over the last 22 years. Of these 17 rivals, we've had some that pushed us to the limit and others that seemed like pushovers. Rival characters are by far the most developed and dynamic characters in the main series games, and I can't wait to talk about my favorites, so let's go. Number 5 Bianca from the Unova region Bianca is quite possibly the first of what would become known as friendly rivals, which refers to a rival that isn't much of a challenge in battle regardless of where you are in the game and their main objective is to guide you in your journey rather than impede your progress with a test of strength. While I feel this trend has grown more or less out of control, starting with Generation 6 and beyond, when Bianca was your rival, the concept of an honest, truth-driven rival who followed her heart, was humble, and chose Pokemon she liked rather than Pokemon that were strong in battle, was an altogether new concept and a refreshing break from the norm, especially after Thud, hyperactive berry from the Steno games. Bianca has excellent character development throughout our time in Unova. She sets out strongly and confidently. She has some uncertainty as she continues to not have the support of her father, which gets recognized by one of the most amazing gym leaders I have ever seen in Elisa. Elisa then assists Bianca in teaching her father to let go and to support her in following her dreams. Not only does Bianca accompany the player character in black and white, but she also ends up playing a supporting role to the next player character in black and white too, as Professor Juniper's assistant. Bianca accepts the truth that not everyone is destined to be a strong Pokemon trainer, and adapts her dreams to better match the reality of the immense talents she's given in other, just as important areas of the Pokemon world. For accepting that we can't all be the very best like no one ever was, Bianca becomes the number 5 rival on my list. Number 4 Sharon from the Unova region. It's back to back Unova rivals. While Bianca's story arc throughout Unova was fulfilling and Hughes was kind of annoying, Sharon is easily one of the more charismatic rivals we have ever seen. Till the end, he believes in the ideals that guide him and he believes in strength above all else. Sometimes a character doing a complete 180 and developing into something much different than how they started is an amazing journey. Other times, Seeing a character grow into their own shoes, keep the same path, and stick to their personal values is just as motivating and incredible to watch. Seeing Sharon be frustrated but undeterred after each battle shows just how strong-willed he is, and this was even more evident in Black and White 2 when he became a gym leader. Sharon, for never wavering from what you believe in, you're my fourth favorite rival. Number 3 Wally from the Hoenn region some Generation 3 fans may have wanted to see Brendan or Mei here, but I feel like Mei was overly supportive despite how often you defeat her, and Brendan by the time Generation 3 rolled around was too in line with the then expected jerk-ish rival who pushed you to be your best by being a bit condescending and not really believing in you. Wally changed the formula entirely by not even rightly being a trainer when you first meet him. As opposed to the old man in Viridian City who teaches you to catch Pokemon and drink coffee while you're at it, you are more or less the one who teaches Wally to catch a Pokemon. You are already much more well versed in the ways of being a Pokemon trainer, so you already have the edge, unlike rivals previously where they always seem to be a step ahead of you. With Wally, this competitive advantage and edge slowly disappears as Wally whittles away at the experience gap between you. And the final battle with Wally, especially in Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire, is an over the top, mega evolving battle for the ages. The character development of Wally going from defenseless, sick, and uncertain boy into a confident and competent trainer is always a joy to be a part of every step of the way. Wally's journey emotionally and physically takes him to the number three spot on my list. Number two Blue from the Kanto region. The original, unforgiving, brutal rival who started it all. Blue is always ahead of you, and he lets you know it too. He belittles you at every turn, and even when you best him in battle, he gives you the whole I wasn't even trying routine that he says with such conviction that even though you just won, you stop to wonder if you just got lucky. This guy is confident to a fault, 
The original, and arguably still the best twist in all the Pokemon games, came when you thought you'd left Blue and your desk at Victory Road, beat the gauntlet that was the Elite Four, and you could rightly take your place as champion of the- no wait, Blue beat you here again. Then you had the gruesome task of beating the strongest and most well-balanced team in the game, with only a break to heal your team if you still had potions. After you defeat him, his grandfather, Professor Oak, scolds him for saying that he didn't last long as champion because he didn't care for his Pokemon. Whether he changed his training strategy or not after that remains to be seen. Unfortunately for Blue, just like his reign as champion, his reign as best rival character didn't last long either, and that puts him at number 2 on my list. Finally, number 1. Silver, from the Johto region. Just when it seemed Blue tested you to your limit, in comes Silver. The son of the infamous Giovanni, big boss of Team Rocket, Silver is a kid with daddy issues on a path to destroy what's left of his father's evil Team Rocket, though his intentions are anything but good. He literally starts out his Pokemon journey by breaking into Professor Elm's lab in New Barktown and stealing his starter Pokemon. This is a dynamic unique to Silver, in that no other rival has duplicated this. By literally being a criminal from the start, you don't just find a physical and mental challenge by trying to best him in battle, but there's also a moral battle being waged here, and this added morality dynamic is what makes Silver such a rich character. If you thought Blue was only interested in strong Pokemon, Silver takes it to the next level. There's lots of between the lines reading going on here, but it's implied that Silver physically abuses his Pokemon to toughen them up. Over time, as Silver continues to lose to the player character, being lectured by the powerful but thoughtful and caring Lance, and finally watching the player character accomplish his dream of crushing Team Rocket without him, Silver is left aimless, with only his defeats and Lance's parting words to occupy his thoughts. While we don't see most of this transition, it seems Silver learns a lesson about not becoming the monster you are trying to destroy, and it is heavily implied that Silver turns a corner and begins treating his Pokémon with love and respect. This becomes significant to his character development, because what I would consider to be his signature Pokémon, Zubat, ends up evolving into a Crobat late in the journey. Zubat's evolution to Golbat and then into Crobat is a meaningful one, because Golbat only evolves into Crobat when it has reached a high level of friendship with his trainer, in this case, Silver. When it comes to the best rival, Silver wins the gold medal in my book, and he is by far my favorite rival in the Pokemon games. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope you enjoyed today's Pokemon content. If you did, please leave a like so I can better understand the content you like and don't like. Want to join the conversation? Leave a comment down below, I do read them. Finally, be sure to stay up to date with my content by clicking the subscribe button. That's all for me, have an awesome day, and I'll see you soon with more Pokemon content.